Hello, everybody. How are you today? Hopefully you can all hear me. Have you ever had one of those days where you couldn't figure out where the button to make everything start was? Because apparently that's my day today. <laughs> but uh, welcome to our version 5.7 stream. So happy to show off a couple of cool things from 5.7. And I didn't really have uh, an opportunity uh, to show off 5.6. Uh, I promise Tiklo will show up very, very soon. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, <laughs> uh, we've got a bunch of cool things to, to, to show off. Um, the devs have been hard at work. Uh, there'll probably be a little bit of a pause before our next one, cause we're starting to get ready for the remaster and, uh, implementing the, the remaster books. So trying to get that all in place. There's some stuff that you might've seen go into the system that probably doesn't man uh, matter for you, uh, unless you are a content publisher, uh, in which case you can now tag things. Uh, I don't know about when Tiklo is going to show up, but apparently Sterling's already here. Uh, so why don't we begin showing off a couple of cool, uh, a couple of new cool features? Uh, first one is for generation of rural elements. Uh, we always want to make your life a little bit easier, and so there is a couple of new modal dialogues that are, are not modal dialogues, but dialogues that will end up helping. Um, so. A lot of them, when you pick them, they sort of have just the, the normal null entry. And the first one that we had that had its own custom thing was flat modifier. It sort of comes up like this. Uh, one new addition we have is that you can now set the priority for rule elements. Uh, this is something that unless you're configuring a, a chain of rule elements, you don't need to worry too, too much about. But if it matters what order your rule elements fire in, you, you can now set that. Uh, there are default values in the system. Uh, and you can sort of see in, in our guide what we recommend and uh, what the normal values that we ascribe to certain operations are. Uh, so, so that's helpful if you're, you're coding your own. Uh, but in any case, you can now simply put the priority order in here. Uh, so flat modifier was the first one that we had that uh, we could really do a whole lot of changes um, without having you know, the, the normal, hey, look, here's a big box that's empty for you to figure out everything on yourself. Uh, we've now expanded that, so there's a couple of cool ones. Uh, let's say you want to make an aura. Well, now you can set your aura, set the level of the effects. The tooltips can tell you what to do. Uh, merge existing. If you have two auras that overlap that are the same or have the same tag, uh, you can apply the effects just by literally dropping it in, and then you can determine what to, what it'll look like, including the cool texture thing that we added in 5.5. Uh, so aura's got uh, a new front end for it. Uh, the next one, maybe you saw I had one here when I was practicing. Uh, multiple attack penalty, same thing. Uh, looks very, very similar to uh, what you would see for a flat modifier. Uh, then we have the, the token image one, which I think people will like. Uh, and so you can put in the path, you can put in the tinting and, and change the scale, uh, set up your predicates, and same with uh, the token light rule element. Uh, so now you can set all the information for your, for your bright and your dim radius. Everything can all be done from this interface. You can set up your animation, which is really, really nice. And then a bunch of the advanced options that exist. So everything that you see in the the way you would normally configure a light is now able to be configured directly in the rule element. Then the rule element will self-generate and it will just work. Uh, it gets kind of annoying when you have lots. Let's say we really don't want the aura to be at the top because it's not the one we're looking at the most. Uh, we can now drag uh, our, our rule elements around and change the order. So we can move them up and down simply by drag and drop. So that's something that's handy for, for people who like to create rule elements. You can now sort of do the, the drag and drop reordering. Uh, a couple other cool things that we changed. Uh, first, I think we demoed it on the last stream, but I'll demo it again. If you target a creature um, and then hold the Alt key, you can see who's flanking and who's not. So you select the character you want to look at. You target the character that matters, and it'll show you whether or not there's a flank. So again, target the character that you want to analyze. Select the character. If if it if you just own one PC, it doesn't matter. It'll always be selected. Uh, and then you just sort of hold Alt, and it'll show you whether or not flanking will be applying. Uh, oh, I should zoom in. Good idea. Hey. Uh, I noticed Bless is now an aura. Has that changed in the remaster? Maybe. Uh, I don't know that it will come out officially in the actual printed remaster, 
Uh, but we got uh, we got confirmation from Michael Sayer directly that uh, Bless and Bane are auras. So we will. So that that's now a thing. They are officially auras. We we've been told. Uh, some changes that were made on the character sheet. If we go to the front page of the character sheet, you now notice there's there's less here. Uh, we've moved a couple of things around to the biography, things that really didn't matter. So the height and the weight of characters is there, uh, just to make the front page a little bit cleaner. And then we have uh, tool tips now for the bulk. So if you hover over bulk, it'll show you uh, whether you're encumbered and how that's calculated, your max bulk and how that's calculated. And so let's say I add hefty hauler. It won't tell you that it's because of hefty hauler, but now I've added it. I go back to my inventory, the numbers have changed, and I hover it five plus strength plus two. And then 10 plus strength plus two. Yeah, the, the whole bulk act, uh, we also removed the ability to add bulk encumbrance, like bonus encumbrance, because it, just really wasn't needed. It's something that was from the very, very start of the system, not needed anymore. If you really want to bring that mechanic back in, you can just do the exact same thing that Hefty Hauler does um, and use active effect likes, uh, active effect likes to um, add to the encumbered and add to the max value. So you haven't lost the capability, you just lost the simple box to put it in. And now you'll do it through rule elements, which is a fair thing to do to declutter the sheet uh, for, for people who want very specific weird things that really aren't in the rules. Uh, yeah, so we tried not to stop you. There's a little bit of an extra hurdle. Uh, it's something you have to do once, and literally there's a feat you can copy from. We're hoping that's not too, too much of a, a jump. Uh, other cool things that uh, ha have happened. So here I have Huff the Puff, which is our now unofficial kineticist. Uh, so he's a kineticist goblin, got all of his stuff. Uh, I've dragged things to the, the macro bar. So he doesn't have his aura up, and if I try and use his strikes, the action just doesn't exist. So let's channel elements and then we'll apply it. So great, his aura is up. And now I want to cast an elemental blast. We now bring up a dialogue that lets you select whether it's one or two actions, your map penalty, damage, and you can choose uh, melee or ranged. So everything that you see can now be done. It'll roll and it'll change uh, everything that you need it to change. It's just now you have a modal dialogue for it. You can drag it off to the side if you want. Uh, you can do it again for metal. So one action. So it doesn't apply the uh, the strength bonus. So there you go. That's stuff that you can keep up. You can change um, all the variants. So it'll do piercing instead of slashing. So piercing, slashing. Everything that you would expect would work just works. It's just a modal dialogue. Uh, it works as well for things like weapons now. Uh, so we have the dagger strike. If you put it down, you'll now get the exact same options to either throw or to uh, do a, a normal attack. You can also sheath it, draw it, drop it, pick it up, all of the normal things that you, you would want to do. Uh, so much, much handier for someone who's only really using one weapon. Uh, you can just drag and drop and you're ready to go. Uh, just want to make things a little bit easier. Uh, other cool stuff that we have. So Hufflepuff has Flying Flame. Uh, you'll notice much like, uh, so he's leveled up, he's level five, which means level plus two changes, uh, adds one D6. Uh, he also has the, the, the bonus uh, that changes it from his gate from D6 to D8. So you'll see that the total value here is three D8. So level five goes from one uh, D6 plus two plus two is two D6 more, so three D6, but it converts to three D8. So you see the number that will roll in green. If you hover it, you find the base value. Uh, so anything that has the at damage check uh, now does it, and uh, we, we chose green to make it look the exact same way that it looks for uh, if we went elite or weak. So that's something that's kind of neat. So if you, you pop up your thing, you now have your damage, it'll roll the correct damage. Uh, I'm not sure if I drop the gate. No, it stays at 3d8 because that's, that's just who he is with his gate. And last but not least, we also have our devise a stratagem. Um, so Quinn has devise a stratagem. We'll target, well, we'll, we'll not target anything yet. And so this will walk you through. So let's devise a stratagem um, and we'll apply that. Okay, uh, target a token by mouse hovering and press T. So I want to target this ASMR redeemer 
And there we go, we rolled it. And so it has the effect and it's stored. Uh, for some reason, I want to attack this guy first. Uh, I know that I've got a 10 stored. So I'll roll my attack here and you'll see it does not come up because it's linked to the actor. But now I target the second one and I swap over with my sword cane and you see that devise a stratagem is utilized, turned on, can't turn it off because that's what devise a stratagem does. Uh, everything else is applied the way it's supposed to be. And then the devise a stratagem uh, goes away. So I want to go again, I'm not locked in. Uh, so that's all nice and automated. Uh, if we move over to NPCs now. Uh, so here we have the, uh, but does damage work? I mean, I assume it works. Yeah, strategic strike. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right, Shark. I should have showed off that if I roll the damage from the normal one, I get the normal one. If I roll it from the one that had devised a stratagem, then it gets the, the bonus precision damage. So something that was asked for and, and we finally did. Uh, under inventory, we now have the bulk for uh, the characters uh, for, for NPCs. Where did I have my loot actor? I pulled everything off of these while I was playing around earlier. Half plate, steel shield, and we'll give 10 bolts. So you see, as we add on, the bulk goes up, so you know what they're wearing, what they've got. Uh, and that's the top one. So you'll also notice here we have bolts. There's 10 of them right now. If I loot this guy, because they're dead for some reason, even though they're not, take all their stuff, uh, the bolts you see just go up to 20. They sort of stack in. Uh, the weapons and armor don't, but the, the bolts do. Oh no, the weapons and armor did. Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, if you loot two at the same time, they won't stack. If you loot, uh, if you loot one and you already have those items, uh, they will stack. So I went up to two half plate, two steel shields, and up to 20 bolts. Oh, and another long-standing one, uh, four feats for NPCs. You can now reorder them if you want. So you want plus one status on the top, you can now do that yourself. Uh, just drag, just drop, and then you're done. Uh, okay, other cool things that we have. Shoot, I had an effect picked out, but we'll just type effect. So effect despair, we'll drop that on Mauricio. So now uh, for conditions, you can only just post it to chat, but as the GM for a, an effect, you now have a little pencil icon. So if you want to quickly edit something, you can go in, swap the rules out, And uh, and so it's just a, a quick way to access or, or check uh, what's going on with a particular effect. Uh, next cool one, you can do this from the party sheet or there is a the generate check prompt macro. So let's say that you want to do a skill check really, really quickly for your group. Uh, I don't know, they, they want to cross a river or they want to swim across. And so they need to do a swim check. Uh, so the DC, because of the type of river it is, it's going to be 15. Um, you can set a difficulty modifier if you like. Um, it'll be an athletics check. And I don't know, we'll say river lore. I think you can only pick lores that characters have. Um, and then we can make it a secret check. I don't know, it's a river, so we'll say nature's good as well. So you generate the prompt and this will pop up and so it'll tell players they have to swim and they can roll athletics or nature and it's secret. They don't know if they're successful. Oh. So it's a quick way for you to, to create checks on the fly. Uh, you can do it as well from the party sheet if you want. It is under exploration. There's now a little button here for a check prompt. It loads up the exact same thing. So we'll have an open swim now. I will make it a, a simple DC, uh, an expert, and again, athletics. Generate the prompt. And so here we are. Here we are. Uh, the players just see it's an athletics check. But when they roll it, they'll actually see the result in this case. 
Uh, is the macros always going to be in zero? No, you have to load it from the compendium. Uh, I just put it there because it's handy to demo. But you just generate check prompt. There you go. It's in the PF2E macros. Uh, other stuff that we, we did add that people might think is a little bit cool. So you can now do custom immunity, weakness, and resistances. That's built in. For those of you who are using different compendia, and uh, especially if you make your own, and you want to migrate, we now have a feature that lets you do that. So let's go to the, the Starfinder field test. Uh, this one I already migrated, so you can now check the migration status. So you see that the current schema is 0 0.878. Uh, if I go to the class features, I have not migrated that one yet. So the schema is 0 0.853. So if I want to update it, I just have to unlock my folder and then I can choose to migrate the compendium. And there we go. It's all updated. So for those of you who use uh, third party modules that maybe aren't updating regularly uh, or you have your own compendium and you want to make sure that everything's up to date with the current structure, then uh, yeah, you can now use this handy little feature. All right. For class features, uh, there's a bunch now that don't always fit and you want them to be searchable. So, uh, oops. So under details, uh, we now have the ability to add other tags. Um, so I don't know. Maybe only Mercial can have it. I'll have a whisper tag now. Uh, so that's something that, uh, that you can add in to, to help with sorting, especially for third-party content. And the last cool thing that I think that I have to demo is we've now exploited the uh, token secret disposition option. So right now it's indicating that uh, this, this NPC here, uh, they're hostile. But let's say we don't want to know that off the bat. So we can go up to the token and we now have the secret disposition option. So this gives a purple border for anyone who owns it and no border for anyone else. So you could set this on all of your tokens. So as an owner, I'll see this in purple. Uh, if I didn't own it, uh, which I can't demonstrate because I'm logged in as a GM, uh, if I hovered over, I would no longer see the sort of the blue or the the the, uh, the red or the I think the last color is yellow. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a hazard that you want to have instead of putting out a tile, you can now put it out, give it a secret uh, disposition. As a GM, when you hover it because you own it, you'll see it in purple, but the player would never know. They'd just mouse over top, and uh, it would not be there. Is there a way to automate concussive trait with custom IWR? No, uh, we have not worked on that. It would be kind of silly to go out and do something that eventually will be added in the system. And if you're going to put in the work, just add it to the system. OK. So uh, next up, the, the part that everybody actually wants to come here for, uh, why don't we get a visit from our favorite friend, Tiklo the Goblin? Hello everyone, is your friend Tiklo. I am here to tell you about adventure that I'm taking. <clears throat> I decided I want to go and explore wider world. Galarian is boring, and I am running out of things to sell here. So I'm going to wonderful place of Tian Sha. And my friend has helped me out. Uh, her name is Ayanara Nativari. <clears throat> she's a senior editor at Paizo, and she's the one who edited the world guide, the character guide, and the seasons of Ghost Adventure Path. She works very hard behind the scenes on all the products, but these are the ones that she is leading. She's a relatively new person here at Paizo, and uh, before joining, she worked in the nonprofit doing freelance writing and editing for places like World Building Magazine. When she's not making everyone on the editing team laugh with very well-timed jokes, <clears throat> she enjoys playing video games, including things like Final Fantasy or Team. Uh, so, uh, I'm happy to open up things for questions, uh, if anyone has any. Uh, otherwise, there is one last uh, item to talk about. Seeing nothing immediately pop up. Uh, so, coming up relatively soon, uh, about two weeks from now, a little bit over two weeks, we're going to be doing sort of our annual fundraiser. Uh, we've been pretty successful in the past. Last year, we, we as a a team broke $10,000. So I think we're going to try and do a little bit better than that this year. 
as most people know, uh, the, the volunteer development team, we've never sort of uh, accepted money. It doesn't make sense for what we do. Money makes things hard. Uh, and there, there's people who work on the team that really can't accept financial remuneration. Uh, plus, if people donated money to something like a Patreon, how do you divide it up like, amongst a group of volunteers fairly? How do you wait work for one person against another? Uh, so instead, uh, at the start of the pandemic, we, we decided, well, why don't we get people to donate to charity? And uh, a couple of years ago, we, uh, we came upon the idea as a group that Paizo was supporting Extra Life. So why don't we support Extra Life? So we set up an Extra Life team. And I think the, the first year, we were about 90% of the donations towards Paizo. Uh, last year, we did at least similar to that. But internally, I think we multiplied by three times. Uh, so it would be lovely to do that again. I, I don't expect the community to, to donate $30,000 to uh, children's hospitals. But if you did, that would be super cool. I, I certainly won't stop anyone. Um, I don't know that we fully set up our rewards. I'll probably do custom coasters again. Uh, it, the, it will be on November 4th. Uh, still working out exactly what we're going to do. We're we're talking with with Paizo, and we might not stream Pathfinder. We might be looking at uh, at streaming Starfinder Second Edition. So there there could be a couple of spots open uh, to auction uh, if you want to to be able to play with the people developing Starfinder Second Edition live. Could be a really really cool opportunity, and obviously for a good cause. I'll probably end up doing coasters again. Uh, I mean, it'll look something like this. Uh, I'm probably not going to do Glyph of the Open Road. If we end up doing Starfinder, I'll probably do something Starfinder themey, uh, Starfinder Second Edition themed. We'll we'll see. I haven't designed yet. I haven't sat down to do it, but I just want to let everyone know: yes, it is coming. Uh, more news will be coming soon. Hopefully, we'll have our plans firmed up sometime later this week. So yes, Extra Life coming should be very exciting. It, it's been pretty hilarious in the past. Would love to have it planned a little bit more in advance. I have no idea if uh, if Shark is going to do what he did last year, but uh, he put in different tiers. If you donate, if people donated to a certain level, he would then go and implement different features, and uh, we can see that now in the system. So one of the ones from last year is uh, on armor, automatically upgrading the details. So add a potency, add a resilient rune. Prices go up, level goes up. And the name changes. So that, that was one of the, I think that was his top tier reward for last year. Uh, <laughs> so check out each of the team members, see if there's a, a cool goal that they're going for uh, or, or other reward that, that's possible or just donate because it's kind of awesome to, to donate. Oh yeah, that's right. Immunities, weaknesses, and resistances. That, that was a big one that was on the, the donation list for, for Shark for last year. Uh, if he doesn't have any good ideas for things for him to implement, I certainly do. Uh, I can pull out the, the spreadsheet of uh, things that people bug me about. So, other questions that we have in the chat. Curious to, as to what the process will be for the remaster. Will it be in stages or a huge change? Uh, essentially, the book comes out, we change over the rules. We've let people know if you really want the old rules and absolutely nothing changes, uh, on the Foundry page, you can go and uh, go back to 5.2, install that, and and you'll have none of the remaster content. For those of you who are generating items um, and, and want to see, eventually we'll likely be able to filter by this. But uh, if we go into the details now, you can it'll be the publication that it's in, the author, but we now are, will say whether it's an OGL or work thing and whether or not it's a remaster item. So here it's an original Acid Flask, so OGL, no remaster. If we go over to the Kineticist class, or I guess anything in the Kineticist class, OGL and remaster. Once uh, work content starts coming out, it'll be tagged that way. The system will try and make some way for things to just kind of work, but um, it's, it's not a simple, non-trivial thing to do. So if you're playing with the system, expect to start using the remaster rules. Uh, we'll try and keep up the um, the the change the the remaster changes journal uh, as a reminder for people. It should pop up on load. If you go down to the section the remaster changes, there's a, a quick thing, and it'll list all the things that we have changed, all the languages that we've changed. So if you're saying, "Oh, I can't find this," go check the remaster list to see what what's swapped over. Uh, we're still working out what we're going to keep. 
we can't keep everything because the system's just too big. We really don't want to force people into the position where you now need a supercomputer to run the system because of how data is handled by, by Foundry. We're, we're going to try and strike the best balance that we can. I think somebody's probably going to end up making the uh, making a module that will have all of the old items that you can load into your world. All I'm going to say is it's complex, it's changing, and I promise we're doing our best. Yeah, uh, to Kale's right. We think we've coalesced into a decent approach, one that we can sort of get behind. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be what everybody will want individually. Uh, and that's what makes it a good compromise. Everyone will be upset at us. And when I say upset at us, feel free to yell at me because in the end, I'm the one who gets to say, yes, this is how we're doing things. The rest of the team will put input, but I'm the one who says, yep, this is what we're doing. So if you want to blame anyone, feel free to blame me personally. Uh, will there be tools to change tokens on the Canvas to remaster version? You mean to, to migrate forward? Possibly if someone builds it. I don't know that we'll do it natively in the system. Uh, there, there's not much really that, that can be done because of some of the, the things that Paizo have said. Things that are under the OGL are staying under the OGL. Things that are going to be under the ORC license are going to be ORC. Uh, in the case of an old adventure path, Paizo's expectation is that you will use the original version. So if you want to update it, that's going to probably be manual and on you, unless someone does something really cool and makes like a, an adventure importer that will go through an old adventure path and, and modify it to become an orc document. Yeah, it's definitely hard to make things work because we don't even know the what, what all the changes are going to be. There's only so much that we know. Um, and it's it's barely, we, we do know a little bit more than the rest of the community, uh, but we don't know all of the plans. We don't know what the final product's going to look like. We don't know how certain things are going to be handled. Um, it's going to be weird, but uh, all, all I will do is remind the community that if you don't like how it rolls out, uh, we're doing the best that we can with the direction we've got, but this is really a 100% Paizo thing. If you don't want the uncertainty, by all means, stay, stay on 5.2. Uh, and wait for the remaster to be all done. Uh, you'll have to wait, I don't know, a year. Foundry won't get too far ahead. You'll miss out on some cool features. Uh, but right now, at least, the, the changes aren't huge, and we will do our best to keep the system super playable. Yeah, well, what I, to Kale's right, and, and I'll echo this, and it's something that I wanted to stay at the very start, and, and Paizo discouraged me from saying it for some reason. The... The changes that are coming with the remaster, uh, not a lot of people have read all of them. Well, nobody's read all of them because they're not all done. But when we had the first controversy about uh, things like wizards and spells and, and the Reddit got really upset, it's because Paizo released a piece and they didn't release the whole picture. And the whole picture wasn't as drastic as everyone was making it out to be. Uh, so unfortunately, nobody from Paizo stepped up right away and said, hey, this is only a piece we probably shouldn't have released like one third of the changes, wait to see everything before you judge, because I think people are going to be mostly happy. Obviously, there's going to be people who are unhappy. That's just the nature of people. There's people, I bet there is somebody who's built their 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 entire character around how days scales or something odd. And now it's fundamentally going to be changed or something weird. And they'll be very upset about that. But realistically, the, the number of major changes to the system, they're, they're not that big and a lot of them are for the better. Which changing for the better? That, that I don't think anyone's going to complain. Like, oh no, my witch is going to be more useful. <laughs> my workflow. Uh, we'll we'll put spacebar heating back just for you. So with that, I think that's all I've got to show off tonight. Hopefully, uh, you know it was quick, but there was a lot of cool stuff that was in the last two. Uh, yeah. The focus point change that uh, has been announced is a huge boon to casters. Somebody who's gone and, and built their character around being able to refocus multiple times. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but you can now go and get extra feats. Like, you don't lose anything, you just gain more. I know a couple of champions who are high level who will be very, very happy. What? I can lay on hand three times and then I don't have to worry about the end of the day coming?
Uh, I, I think that at some point, lots of people probably wanted to make the, the changes a little bit more substantial. I don't think that was a really good idea. I think they've made a decent number of them. Uh, there are some sacred cows that I wish they would have gotten rid of. I, I won't say it live on the stream, but I'm sure everybody knows what rule variant they that I think should just have died or been totally rewritten, uh, totally unrelated. Maybe you should try automatic rune progression if that's the sort of game that you want, because that's really what most people want. Anyways, I hear cats that are starting to get very upset and growling at each other, so uh, I'll leave everyone. Thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll be back with our next release, which will hopefully be dealing uh, detailing all of the remaster changes. Uh, one more pitch for Extra Life. So please, uh, on the 4th, come watch us live stream. I'm not 100% sure what we'll be doing, hoping for Starfinder 2, but we'll see. Uh, if you want to donate to Extra Life as part of our team, that's the, the link there. Uh, Takeo put it into the chat. If you ever lose it, feel free to go to the announcement channel. It is the announcement that is pinned. Uh, I think there's links directly to a couple of our pages. I should probably get everyone else into that. Um, but yeah, really worthwhile cause. Hoping to break what we fundraised last year. Uh, oh, I have them here. So, uh, the 2121 and 2022 fundraising gold medals. Um, and hopefully I'll have some cool stuff to, to show off as well. And uh, as much as I got them, I think it's really a reflection on the computer, or on the, uh, computer, on the community. Uh, so thank you everyone, and I wish you all a pleasant evening. Happy gaming.